I do have a special connection with Bolivia. I was born there. Uh, I grew up till I was around 20 years old and lived in Bolivia for that amount of time. So I do have an affinity for the country and uh, its natural beauty. Bolivia is perfectly situated, almost you might say, in the heart of South America. It's smack in the middle of South America. It's surrounded to the north by Peru and Brazil and also to its east with Brazil. It's got Paraguay and Argentina to the south, uh, Chile to the west, and also Peru to the west. And it's completely landlocked. It's, uh, it's a country about twice the size of Texas. It has no access to the sea and uh, has been landlocked. Uh, the only large water uh, mass that they have is Lake Titicaca, which actually they also share with Peru. train is found square on the other side of Bolivia along the border with Brazil and pretty much in the Amazon basin. Amatrine is found is in a locality called the Pantanal. Pantanal is by very definition a large swampy region. So in the rainy seasons this is a, almost impenetrable. It's completely wet and swampy. It's filled with rivers and lakes and all sorts of uh, uh, aquatic waterways. Uh, the mine is located very close to this and so it's in pretty much the Amazonic or Mato Grosso region and it's in the lowlands of, of Bolivia. Amatrine is a gemstone that is unique to Bolivia and it's unique in that it is purple on one side, that's the amethyst in the gemstone and it is yellow on the other side and that is really the citrine portion of the of the gemstone. The gemstone is quartz uh, but it is a blended form of quartz that has these two varieties that we know as separately as amethyst and separately as citrine. They're all blended into one as one gemstone and they're only found in this region of Bolivia on a commercial basis. Some ametrine has been found in other regions of the world, including in Africa and some other places. But, but the truth is that even though that material exists, it's not really commercial. In other words, it's not being mined in a, in a large scale like the ametrine mine is being mined. I like ametrine because it is so unique. It really has this interesting split in color. So in recent years, the owners of the mine and, and the deposit have decided that it would really be a good idea to blend those colors, not necessarily to make those 50-50 color splits, but rather blend them. And that's where it really begins to get interesting because the material produces some russet colors, some peach colors, some really interesting off-yellow, slightly magenta type colors that are just very strong and very deep and a lot of it really depends on the the skill of the cutter in terms of how those those mixes of colors come across but it is a gem like no other in that regard it is completely unique you don't have that kind of mixes in in many gemstones as you do here because you're going with opposing colors you're going with yellow and you're going with purple and the mixes of course create these really wonderful and unique kinds of gemstones. Ametrine as a gemstone is rare because it's found nowhere else on earth. It is found but only in very small quantities and not commercial quantities. So in that regard it's rare. It's this particular blend of colors that is unique and special. Now, it's interesting, uh, when you ask the question about rarity, the material resources are finite, and the material is rare, it's unique to this place only, and I think that's something that people need to, to bear in mind. I find that getting to the mine is one of the most challenging things that this particular operator has to deal with. Because we're talking about an area that is just 
pampas and jungle and very few people in between. Just a huge and desolate region, part of Bolivia. There are some roads that lead to the region, but it would take days upon days to get there. The roads often get inundated through the, in the rainy season. You can also go to other major cities and then catch boats that go along the, the Paraguay River, which is a, a natural border between Bolivia and Brazil, through the Pantanal all the way up to Lake Mandiore, which is very close to the mine. At Lake Mandiore, you put down your boat, and uh, hopefully there will be transportation waiting, and it's about a 12-mile ride back to the mine. So transportation is a, is a big thing and a big preoccupation for the mine owner. Now, he has put in a landing strip for small aircraft right at the mine. It's, I'd say it's a mile or two outside of the mine. And so um, it's there for bringing him there because he certainly doesn't want to take those long routes to get back to the mine. Yeah, it's also there to get injured people out of the mine if they need to be flown out. And it's there to get visitors to be able to go there comfortably and quickly. It's about a three hour trip from Santa Cruz on by small aircraft. The mine is now owned by a gentleman called Ramiro Rivero. And I don't believe he has any other partners. Now, Ramiro Rivero comes from a mining family and, uh, and has made good use of this particular mine. It's uh, hard rock mining. You have to mine into a hillside. They have a north-south running uh, hillside which contains the mineralized quartz area. And so they have dug two to 300 meter shafts into the hillside where they can access those mineralized zones. They have probably five other shafts that are being worked and one open pit area. Now the open pit area is interesting in that these were areas where there were other shafts but what they decided to do was to just open up the entire region um, for mining and so they collapsed those shafts and are now mining um, in the open air. So that's an open pit operation. The way the mining is done is once you've reached a mineralized zone and that is done through blasting using dynamite and once they've reached an area that they feel is going to be mineralized, then they have other methods of recovering uh, the rough, which are a little more delicate. It uses pick axes and shovels and other types of, of methods. But I mean, when you compare that to blasting, it's, it's a lot more gentle. The overburden that is found in these tunnels is then put into mining carts. Those mining carts be at an angle so that they can be pushed out of the shaft easily by one person and not overdoing it in terms of exertion. The mine cart is emptied at a certain point. It goes down a chute into another mining cart. That mining cart then goes to a washing plant where all of this material is washed with a very high-powered water gun. The finer sediments and other types of sediments are then collected in two different areas for environmental purposes because it is important at the mine that these sediments don't just flow off into the rivers because then you'd be polluting the rivers and various other things. So they collect the sediments in different, in different grades. Once the washing is all done, then again, this material is carted off to a processing plant. And at that point, you have people who are really beginning to pre-sort, I would say, 
the types of materials that they're going to be using commercially in the future. A lot of it, of course, is, is discarded, but the material that is pre-sorted is, is already starting right there at the mine itself. And then it goes through several other sorting process once it's taken away from the mine and it goes to some of the major cities. The production at the mine has been going down over the years. At one time they were mining 120 tons of overburden a year from which 3,000 to 5,000 kilos of that were considered uh, material that could go into, the, into the, the gem business. Facetable quality, bead quality, that kind of material. Um, of that, uh, a very small percentage, maybe 10%, is really gem quality, where you're looking at really transparent qualities of amethyst and citrine, or ametrine, with no inclusions, no milkiness, uh, where the material is really top quality. From the mine, they put the material in trucks. The trucks go all the way down to Lake Mandiore. There they have boats that are waiting. The material is loaded onto the boats. The boats go down the Paraguay River for about five or six hours. Then they reach another small city where there's sort of a holding area where they hold a lot of the material. And then it goes to Santa Cruz, which is the, um, the area where Minerales y Metales del Oriente, which is the parent company of the mine, uh, has a processing plant where they then cut the material, where it is then preformed, it is then cut and uh, actually they make jewelry for it there as well. Ramiro Rivero has really devised for his entire operation a very nice mine-to-market kind of flow. He not only mines the material, he then preforms it, at his, at his operation in Santa Cruz. It is then cut. It can be cut either in Santa Cruz or in, in other cutting centers around the world. And he uses, for example, China as one of his um, cutting areas. And the material is then put into, into jewelry. And finally, he has a retail operation where he sells a lot of his material. Some of his material is for export, some of his material is for, for use in the jewelry store. So he really has a whole mine-to-market kind of mentality. Ametrine is Bolivia's national gemstone. What I really like about Ametrine is that no one stone is like another one. They're all completely unique. And a lot of it has to do with how the cutter has envisioned this material and has given us his or her vision of how that material should look. So often cutters have become very, very creative with ametrine. So you, you get this really delicious mix of colors. And I, I refer time and time again to, to peaches or to sunsets or to lilac flowers or so forth where there are mixes of colors. This is what um, I'm reminded of when I look at ametrine and I find that these colors are, you know, they, they mean something to me and I'm attracted to them and I especially like them mixed. And I think, I think that's really what I like about ametrine. Really, it goes back to that very first thing I said, that every single gemstone as a result of these mixes is gonna be different from the first one that you saw. And it's gonna be hard to choose.